Hello and welcome to Get Ready and Get Weird. I am Marcella. I forgot to introduce myself for the last two videos, so hello, I'm Marcella. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm glad you're here. Today, as you saw in the title, we are talking about giant pandas to be specific, not the red pandas, but the giant pandas. So the classic black and white panda bear that we are all familiar with. That is why I have space buns again. I tried to do them a little differently, but you know, you can only do so much to make them look like panda ears. So here we are with panda ears on my head, as well as a nice dark smoke show on the eyes for pandas. So do I look like a panda yet? <laughs> so pandas were a suggestion from my friend Dewan and my mom also suggested it. And you have to do what your mom says. Well, you don't have to. But I do what my mom says most of the time. I try to listen to my mom, so here we are talking about pandas. There's a lot of info. You know, you think you know an animal, and then you look into it, and it's like they lied to you for your whole life. No, I'm just joking. But there's a ton of information out there. I was shocked by some of it. Without further ado, I am so excited to share with you some new information about the giant panda. And I have a clean face. We're gonna jump right into getting ready and getting weird while we talk about giant pandas. Giant pandas are also known as bamboo bears or just panda bears. So these are the classic white and black bears that we are likely all familiar with. We've likely all seen them as characters in different cartoons and movies, as well as um, the WWF. They were often on advertisements for them, though I believe there's, that stands for the World Wildlife Fund. Yay! If I'm wrong, it'll be loud and proud across the screen here. That That is not what it stands for, but. So panda bears, giant pandas, are the pandas that you think of, as opposed to the red panda, which is a different animal. Today we're gonna talk about where pandas live, who are they related to, because there's a bit of a question mark there, as well as their diet, and then my favorite part, fun facts, which is just, I mean, you can't go wrong with a couple of fun facts about cute animals. So let's talk about where we could find them. Their natural habitat is in mountainous range places in China. It's fairly specific, but it's not as specific as, let's say if you saw the axolotl video, it's not that specific. Um, they are found in a couple of different places, but every place they are found is mountainous at 5,000 to 10,000 feet altitude above sea level. And it must be a dense bamboo and or coniferous forest. So they need, you know, the shelter of the bamboo and the trees and the forest as well as that altitude and so there's just, they're kind of spread throughout, but it's fairly specific. Now that we know where we can find them, let's talk about who in the animal kingdom is the panda related to. There has been speculation that because of a few different characteristics, behaviors, I mean, they're basically vegetarians. We'll talk about that in the diet. So it doesn't seem like they're like a carnivorous bear, bear, they are, they don't hibernate. So again, doesn't seem like they're a bear. So when scientists are looking at who is related to the panda for a long time, they believe they were more closely related to, I believe like badgers and raccoons possibly. But the current consensus, as far as my research is concerned, speaking of research, all of the research articles and such or any uh, magazine articles or blogs that I use, I link below. So check it out as well as any makeup I put on my face. Moving right along. Current research says that they are 
closely related to bears. And we'll talk about that as we go through um, diet as well as some other fun facts, but they are closely related to bears. They are a bear and red pandas. So completely different species. Red pandas are not classified the same way that giant pandas are. They are kind of in their own little subset. So that is the current consensus. Although depending on what they're studying, whether it be behaviors, diet, or a few other things, I mean, it's, it's been a debate, a whole debate. Where do these bears belong? So currently they belong with bears. Fozzie, Fozzie, do you need to tell us something? Okay, I think that Fozzie has neutralized the threat by using her barks alone. It's one of her strong suits. She stays in her chair, barks at something that she thinks needs to be barked at, neutralizes the threat, and here we are. Everyone is safe and sound. She's very efficient. Okay, moving along. For the panda look, hello, hi. I wore my hair in space buns. Yes, I did it again. I know I just wore it in the last video. I tried to do it a little differently. They look like bear ears. You can't argue that. So, and then I wore a black shirt. We, trying to get some panda vibes. The other panda vibe I'm gonna do is my eyeshadow. We're going with the dark smoky look. Pandas. We know now what they look like, where we can find them in the wild. Let's move on to diet. I was kind of surprised by their diet. And I know maybe I shouldn't have been. I don't know, but I was, I was a little bit surprised. And I say that because I always learned that pandas only eat bamboo. And while yes, they do eat a lot of bamboo, that's not all that they eat. And one way that they have been put into the category of bear, as I said, that was kind of a debate, hot, hot topic in the scientific community that talks about pandas a lot, is that their teeth, as well as their gut, so their digestive system, are such that they, they're set up to be carniv carnivores. They're set up to eat meat. And so, while yes, they mostly eat bamboo. They eat bamboo for 10 to 15 hours a day. Hello, dream life, just eating all day. I prefer not bamboo, but you know, I don't judge. And at that point, if you just get to eat all day, I don't know if you get to be picky anymore. End of discussion. But they also can eat bugs, small animals. Ooh, these are real panda bear eyes. We're talking some dark black. I just went for it and here we are. Okay, so pandas can eat meat, as we were saying. They can eat small animals, they can eat eggs, they can eat pumpkins, they, what else was it? Uh, kidney beans. And they've been spotted, you know, um, farmers have reported, you know, they ate their lives, like a piece of their, one of their lives, like a goat. For a couple days they ate on a goat. So yes, they do eat a lot of bamboo. That's mostly what they eat. They eat it for 10 to 15 hours a day holy mackerel. They also do need to have, Bozzy's really having a good time out there. They also do need to have at least two kinds of bamboo in order not to starve to death. So I'm, they need the nutrients from two different species of bamboo. All right, we're gonna smoke this out a little more. It really, I mean, those are panda bear eyeballs if I ever saw any. It's a real smoke show over here. 
but I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> okay, so I want to add some, I might just do black and glitter and then do some highlighting. My hands got really marked up. Okay. okay, as I add this black, hello glitter, let's talk about the pandas coloring. So we all know what they look like and in my opinion I've always just been like they're white and black and fuzzy because they're cute. That's why I wear what I wear so that's why they're wearing what they wear, right? But it actually does have a purpose and that purpose in the wild is to offer camouflage which yeah that's normally what an animal's <laughs> coloring and coat offers is camouflage for the animal but I was just thinking about cuteness cute factor you know but the black spots on a panda offers camouflage in the shade and then the white parts of a panda offer camouflage in snow so the areas that they live do have quite a bit of snow and their coat allows them to be afforded that camouflage of the white for the snow and the black for then just shadowy areas. Please hold, I need a baby wipe because there's a lot happening on my hand right now. I'm back with baby wipe and we're fixing this um, hand issue so that I can finish this eye look. One fun fact that I was honestly shocked by, and I don't know why, I guess I just never thought about it, but panda bears don't have the eye, like the pupils that you would think other bears would have. Like they don't have the cute round pupil that you think of, that I, I'll speak for myself, that I think of. They have the, you know how domestic cats have a, Slit like a their eye their pupil is a slit and that's how panda bears are also I didn't know that so fun fact and that's another so going back to the where are they related to bears or are they related to cats or are they related to raccoons and it's because of all these small differences, you know, that they are kind of minute differences, but when you kind of put them all together and you compare them to different animals, the possibilities are endless here, for, in my opinion. I got a new bronzer. It's the Maybelline New York City bronzer. The reviews were positive, so let's just dip in. I got color, and this will be in the description box. I got number 200, so. Hmm, cool, works for me. All right, let's talk about actually one of the most surprising things when I was doing this research for the panda video. I found out that pandas have five fingers on their paw, but then they almost have a thumb. So if you look into it, their wrist, one of their wrist bones extends. I'll have pictures, I'll show you, there'll be pictures. But the, their wrist bone extends as almost a kind of thumb to help hold the bamboo as they eat it. And number one, I did not know that was even an option. Number two, it's just, a, it's interesting looking to look at them and watch them holding it, holding their bamboo while they eat it. Bozzy has a lot to say tonight. I don't know if y'all can hear her, but she's in the other room talking about some stuff. I also, wanted to tell you that this whole 
extra wrist bone thing, thumb, that they use to hold bamboo. Scientists are undecided on whether, they have, there is not a consensus as to whether this evolution, this trait was evolved for climbing or for um, eating the bamboo. I mean, we, like if you, if you're watching pandas, you're likely to see them using this extra thumb for while they're eating bamboo. But I'm, I mean, I would assume they also use it while they climb. Why wouldn't they? You know, if you use it, if you got it. So I was surprised to know that not only do pandas have five fingers, so no thumb, but five like little phalanges on their paws. They also then have their wrist bone that kind of extends out. It looks like a little nub and they can move it and they sit the bamboo on it and that's how they hold it. Wow, time for blush. I did learn about babies, panda babies. So mothers, I believe their gestation period is about three to five months. Then they give birth to a baby the size of a stick of butter. Mind you, a full grown panda can range from like 200 to 300 pounds. So this, a stick of butter sized baby, a stick like this, it's like a stick of butter sized baby. That's like a baby, baby puppy for a, a 300 pound adult. After the stick, baby stick butter, butter stick baby, stick of butter baby is born, the mother bear holds on to them in her arms for a full month, like does not put her baby down. And she's always covering it with her other paw or with her head. She just protects this baby, which I'm like, you know, I feel like maybe your gestational cycle could have been a little longer and you could have grown your baby to bigger than a stick of butter inside of your body. I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely not an expert on birth or babies or gestational cycles, but like, can you imagine having a little, I would lose a stick of butter if I was in the wild trying to survive and eat bamboo all day. So I'm just, it's a lot. Anyway, they hold their baby incessantly for a month, protecting it. Good job, way to go pandas. And then the baby is learning how to climb by, by the age of three months old. So in three months, it's a, from a stick of butter, from a, from a stick of butter size, this is estimate, this is my primer. One summer later, three months later, it's climbing a tree with its mom. Okay. Just seems a little extreme in my opinion, but you know what? I still can't climb a tree. It's been 27 years, so. Speaking of babies, for me growing up, I always saw lots of advertisements that said, you know, save the pandas, pandas are going extinct, um, that sort of thing. Good news, the status of them has actually been decreased from endangered to vulnerable. And while vulnerable still isn't great, and there is debate on whether or not, you know, this is cause for celebration. So I'm not gonna throw a big party. I mean, I do think it's notable that efforts are working. The bump from endangered or to vulnerable was made in 2016 or 2017. That's good news. I mean, as much as there is still debate and people don't want us to forget about the pandas and we don't just wanna write them off. I think, you know, we can celebrate wins where we have them. I mean, people have been working hard to protect pandas. So let's celebrate it.
All right. Today, as we were getting ready and getting weird, we covered where the panda lives, who the panda's related to, big source of contention, huge debate there. We're gonna just see where we land with that one. We also talked about what they eat, what they could eat. I'm talking carnivorous. Okay, that's a little bit extreme. Omnivorous, they can eat me. I did not know that. I was not aware of that, so that was news to me. And we talked about fun facts. I personally thoroughly enjoyed researching these um, incredible animals. And the, this was a suggestion, so I'm very happy that my friend Dewan and my mother both suggested covering giant pandas. So that is that for the get ready portion of this get ready and get weird video. I will talk to you in the outro. Well, there you have it. That is all that I know about giant pandas. And I honestly was surprised by some of those fun facts and some of that information. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, if you have friends or family that you think would enjoy learning about weird things, including animals, plants, whatever, send them my videos. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, you can send me suggestions if there's anything that you want to learn more about. I am so encouraged when people send me suggestions or requests. So, Bozzy's really encouraged too. You can hear her back the encouragement in her bark. <laughs> so with that being said, thank you. I really appreciate having you here to watch. All right, everyone. Well, that's all I have for you today. Stay weird. <laughs>